Good afternoon. Um, well, um, it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be here to share our newest son. That's why I put two children in the landscape of Alentejo region. Uh, first of all, um, I want to, to thanks to Dirk and to Birka for our last section in by Skype. It was not easy to, to have the, the first meeting, but I think it was very profitable to, to be aware about this first stage of our observatory, then obviously to our tourism, National Tourism Board, Tourism Portugal, in the person of Sergio, they, they were our first, they boast us, they shake it up us, and I think it was very, very in interesting for, for, for us as a, as a region to start this. Well, I will be very fast because I have 100 slides, no, I'm joking, I uh, just have 10. Uh, but as a, a first approach, our territory, uh, it's in the south of Portugal, uh, between Lisbon and the Algarve. Um, well, actually, we are uh, the biggest region in territory, where one, we are one third of the territory, but we are the less populated. Uh, and this is a challenge for this region, starting now. Well, uh, Alentejo region is divided by five big uh, areas, uh, if I can say sub-regions, uh, in the Nut tree. And a as you may know, we have a lot of work to do, right? We have coastline and we have countryside and also we have the north part with a, dist a, a distinguished landscape. Well, actually in terms of tourism highlights, comparing between the, the big numbers of Portugal and Alentejo, we are the one of the um, smallest region in terms of tourism demand. So um, uh, we have 1.8 overnight stays. Uh, we count 3% of the of the all the tourism demand in Portugal. And in terms of supply, 7%. In terms of rooms and beds, 4%. So uh, our scale in territory, it's, it's not the same the scale in, in the tourism. Well, actually, why we established this, um, this new observatory? Uh, well, firstly, uh, this, is, this was a, a first policy that is dependent on our tourism strat national tourism strat strategy 2027. Uh, and this is linked to a national activity, which is one of the goals, it's to implement observatories in all the regions. So we, have, we want to have in, in our country a network of observatories. And then, uh, secondly, obviously, to develop a recognized UN, U, WTN. Uh, observatory. So we want to be able to uh, to meet the expectations of the uh, international goals for the for the sustainability. So we have to be online with in line with this. Uh, well, actually, w we want also to manage our destination. We want to know what are the limits of this countryside or less populated region. Well, and um, as you as you uh, may know, we have a, f uh, a very very uh, hot topic uh, or a, a fashion uh, destination in Portugal. We have Oporto and Lisbon with uh, with with a lot of tourists, but in the countryside, we want to push them for the countryside. So this is a national policy. So I, I think it will be very interesting to manage this kind of flows. Uh, and measure and monitor this tourism sustainability uh, activity. Uh, I will skip because we have two or three top goals and I will show you how we are thinking to implement our structure. First, firstly, we want to develop a, a methodological framework to, to be able to measure this, this, this effect. But also, I think it will be more effective because we have, we have now this kind of tool. We have the, the business intelligence system of tourism of Portugal that can give us now a huge amount of indicators in terms of NUT2 and NUT3, as I will show you in the, in the, in the last slide. But I think it will be also very interesting to monitor and to be, uh, to be uh, aware about some other kind of effects and phenomena that we have in, in, in our region. In for example, uh, we have six, uh, six uh, uh, points of 
heritage that are classified by UNESCO. So we have to monitor these effects. We have historical centers, we have the traditional songs, we have handicraft, and we want to be able to monitor the consumption of this. And the, obviously, we, we will have the effect of touristification. So we want to be aware about it. Uh, also, we want to provide uh, information for the stakeholders. And we want to share this with all the region, with the private, the public, and the non-private and non-public sector. I think it will be very useful to, to have the, uh, the same language between us. Um, and lastly, obviously, to meet the expectations of the INSTO, right? And lastly, to be able to compare with other destinations. We are a small-scale destination, and we want to share this with the small-scale destination in the other partner in, the, in this network. It will be very useful to have this benchmarking. Well, the, the structure. Well, uh, firstly, we have three main areas, or three main institutions. We have the national authority, which is engaged with this, and it is working with us. We have the, re we have the regional tourism board, the, 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 the Tourism Dolentejo Tourism Board also, and we have also the four, uh, uh, the, the, the university that I belong, I'm a researcher and professor in this university, and also the polytechnic institutes, because the, we have some skills and some competence, and they are, they are now located in the region, so they, they know the region, they can approach uh, uh, um, um, a more effective um, um, implementation of, of, of our work in, in the sub-regions, in the north, in the center, in the south of Alentejo also. How we are implemented, implementing our, government, our governance system? Well, firstly, we have a scientific committee which is constituted by the universities and the, uh, the university and the polytechnic institutes, and also an advisory council, which is composed by the, the National Tourism Board, the National Institute of Statistics, the, uh, an expert about, also about the regional tourism uh, board, and other, other stakeholders from the region. The, the private sector also, uh, it's very important here to be with us. And uh, a third committee, which is a, a committee that linked our advisory and scientific committee with the national international uh, organizations. As, uh, as an example, the OCDA or the Bank World or another institution that is important to get some data and, and to get some information about it. Obviously, the base of this, it's always working with our local working group, which, which will, will be formed in the next few months. So we are working on it. We are working on identifying what are the stakeholders, the main partners to be able to belong to this, this local working group. Well, uh, now what, what we have now currently working? Well, in the destination we have started, the, the regional tourism board started a process of certification. Firstly, for the accommodation sector. They are certifying all the, the accommodation sector in the region with the biosphere tourism certification. Then we have also the first starlight destination in the Alentejo, uh, which is very interesting, this, the, this project. We have a dark sky Alcave. Alcave it's one of the biggest lakes in Portugal, uh, and they are developing this new product, which is very, very interesting. Thirdly, what, are, what we are able now to present, and mainly this is a work from the Tourism, National Tourism Board for, from Portugal. They are now able to give us a lot of indicators that we have here, uh, and then I will share the presentation with you. Uh, we picked almost all the nine issues areas, and in, inside of, of these areas, we have now able to show some indicators that we have here for the uh, sustainable tourism development. However, I give you two or three concerns in the end. Firstly, find financial support for our work. This is one of the big challenges for the, the future of, of, of our structure. Then, how can really we engage the stakeholders in this project? Thirdly, in the short time, the big expectations that we will provoke in the stakeholders. How can we meet these expectations? And thirdly, to be aware that we, we have to monitor 
outside from the basic indicators. We have to monitor some resources which are very vulnerable. The ancient traditions, the ancient handicraft, the fact that we have a historical center classified by UNESCO, and now probably in the short way we'll suffer a plenty of visitors, a plenty of, of pressure from too much visitors. How can we support the municipalities to be more effective on the new policies of mobility and flows and management of the flows? So these are some concerns that we have now in this stage. Uh, thank you for your attention. I invite you to visit our second oldest university in, in Portugal, the University of Évora. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah.